Hi, I'm Ryan Jake Lamborn. I'm a game developer. I've made this, th these things, a whole bunch of things, which I feel makes me sufficiently experienced to uh, give you some d tips, advice on how to get into game development. So first thing, before you you install a game engine, before you write a single line of code or draw a little jumping guy, before any of that, I want to talk to you about you, about what your motivation is to want to be a game developer. Because, you know, some people, they, they get into it for the wrong reasons, and game development, more than anything, is about being able to get the maximum output for the minimum input because you got to put in your time and your effort and you want a game to come out and it's it's really hard but it's even harder if it's not really what you want to be doing and you might not even know that you don't want to be doing it you might think there's nothing you would rather be doing than being part of games but that's not always true so uh, I think there's like two main two main traps people fall into when they're coming into game development. First one, pretty obvious one, you shouldn't get into game development if you just want to make money. Because, well, there's there's no money. <laughs> there's no money here. Um, I'm not even coming from like moral high ground about, you know, artistic integrity. It's just that games might be making a bit more money than other art fields, but it's still an art field and it, it, there's no money here. There's just no money here. You could be, if you really want money, you should be uh, doing something useful. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't do anything useful here making games. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, but I hear about all these indie success stories making fortunes off of something they spent, you know, like a few months on. And, you know, it's just, it's wrong, all right? It's just not correct on a few different levels. I'm friends, I'm not friends with, I, I know Hapu, who made uh, Riska Rain. He's like in, in the community I go to. Um, look at him. Look at that cute little... Look, who's a little hapu? You're a little... Um, he, uh... So he, he's made, like, million or more? I don't know exactly how much money he's made. He's made a... He's a millionaire now, alright? He's a, he's a true indie success story. This hapu guy here. And he spent a year just about exactly a year working on Risk of Rain. But before that, it, it's not like he just started making games with Risk of Rain. He put in his 10,000 hours of experience to get good at making games over like seven years since he was 13, is what he told me. And every game developer does that. Even the ones that aren't successful, if you see a good game coming from a game developer, it's because they have a lot of experience in making games. You don't just, you don't, it doesn't just happen. Like everything else, you, you gotta work towards things. And then it's it's not a steady income. Uh, you could live off of a million dollars for the rest of your life, but if you're getting into games to make money, <laughs> you're not gonna be happy with just that much. You gotta keep pumping out hits and no one can promise you that. In fact, no one can promise you make a single hit because as success in this field is a lot of work and then it's a lot of luck as well i mean you can't you can't judge what will be in you can't judge uh what's going to catch people's attention or what people are are willing to shell out money on and so these people that are huge successes that you're hearing about they are the outliers most game developers get nothing a little bit of people get you know something livable off of but everyone else is you know is nothing there's nothing here and the second trap and this one's a bit more subtle I mean anyone could tell you you shouldn't get into such and such for money but the other trap people get uh, sucked into 
is that they think they like playing games so much that they're they're totally going to enjoy making them. And that's not exactly true. There are some overlaps, like if you really enjoy learning, because game development, there's a lot of learning involved in game development. You never stop learning, you never stop gaining experience. It's you know, really important that you keep learning in game development, and that's mostly what games are, right? So if if you really enjoy learning, maybe that'll that'll translate. But uh, you shouldn't trick yourself into thinking that that there's some game idea in your head that is the perfect game that you'll you need to have because you'll play it forever and you'll love it. That's a huge mistake because. No game developer likes playing their own games. It just, just like no musician is going to like sit around listening to their own songs. No game developer plays their own games. You definitely should not be getting into game development because you want to play a thing. Because you're not, you're not going to enjoy the game you make. I mean, you might, you know, enjoy it on a cerebral level, but you're not going to have the same enjoyment as a player because there's certain things that a game developer doesn't get to have they don't get to have the surprise of you know experiencing things for the first time they don't get to learn the game you always know what the game is going to be and that's a lot of what makes the game fun is learning the game being surprised by things and and even more than your own games i've found personally and other people have agreed with me on this, is that you tend to not like others' games as much either. It's not like you hate games for making them, but uh, you look at them a different way. I mean, once you've seen the sausage get made, you understand a lot of the concepts that go into games in general, and they start to lose their shine sometimes takes a really exciting game to get me interested now like a really conceptually exciting game the motivation you should have coming into game development is that you want to make things and you like learning stuff you want to learn how to make games that's that's the best motivation you can have and if you have like a whole bunch of ideas in your head for games that helps uh but the most important thing is that you know that drive to want to create things. So you are not in it for the money. You're not in it to play some game you have in your head. You're in it to make games. You want to make things and for people to play the things you make. So you're asking me, where do you, where do you start? What, What do you do? I don't know what to do. Where do what language do I learn? C? Do I learn C? Is it C? Assembly? Do I learn assembly? I'll tell you right now, there's there's no best thing aside from Unity, and anything I would suggest to you, Unity, in 2014 might not be like the best thing when you're watching this video in 2016. So what I'm going to do instead is teach you how to figure out what's a good thing to use. All right, so first thing, languages don't matter. It doesn't matter. C, C sharp, JavaScript, Java. I don't, I don't know what Java is. It Java? Does Java use Java? Does it use JavaScript? Language doesn't matter. All right. What you need to be doing is choosing a, a game development kit, a game development engine, and here's how you you choose. So the first thing you want to do is go to websites that host amateur games. You can go to Game Jolt, you can go to Newgrounds, you can go to Indie DB, I don't know, uh, uh, Steam Greenlight, Steam itself, uh, TIG. You gotta go look at the games in these websites and find stuff that looks interesting to you, that looks like something close to what you want to be doing. Most of these the uh, developer will have put in, you know, what it was made in. And if you see that show up time and time again, that's a really good sign. Now, when you go and check out the website of the development kit, things you want to look for is, you know, does it have the features that you want? 
Does it have more features than what you would ever need? That's a great sign. You know, like, uh, does it ex export to the platforms you want to put it on? Does it have gamepad support? You know, what's the, the, audio, the audio support like? Does it do 3D? Does it do 2D? And then a step further from that, you want to find, above all, documentation. Poke around in the documentation and hopefully it'll be good documentation. It'll have, it'll have readable, understandable descriptions, examples of how you use the code. And then after documentation, you want to look for, you know, is there a community? Just search like a question on Google with the name of the development engine and see what turns up. If there's a community, there will be answers. Community and documentation are just so important because that's where you're going to be when you're making games. You're going to have questions all the time and you need that documentation and those results on Google to answer your questions more than anything else. You're not going to read a book and like suddenly be able to program a game. You're not going to you know, watch a video on YouTube that'll teach you how to program a game. You can't remember all of that. You need to be able to, you know, constantly have that at your fingertips. And in fact, when you when you download that engine, when you install it, when you're working in it, uh, I highly recommend if the documentation isn't already, you know, in the program with you to find a version you can download because, you know, uh, internet cuts out sometimes. The internet cable under the sea in the Atlantic might get cut off by a ship. I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to find something that looks good, good game development kit, and to, you know, download it, get the documentation revved up, and start trying to make something in it. Get graphics on the screen, get, uh, keyboard inputs working. Get, get me a working clone of Pong by next week. That's, that's, that's what I'm commanding you to do. Give me Pong by next week. <laughs> or, or Tetris, whatever. Whatever you want. Snake? Snake can work. I'll be back in a week and I, I expect a clone of a game on my desk and uh, I expect you to have some game development experience. I want you to turn that no development ex experience into yes development experience. That, that's my, you're gonna be a yes dev.